Blessings and welcome once again forward to the Tree of Life. I am Jerome Sage Butler. Some call me Jerome, some call me Sage, and some call me Grandmaster. Whichever way you call me, I still am. You know what I mean? We still are. But it's a blessing to have you here once again. You know what I mean? We're having reasonings, conversations, you know, vibrations, you know what I mean? Just words, offerings, and many stirring issues. Things that you talk about, things that many people talk about. So we're just adding some fervor, fervorance to the conversation. And may I dare say even a little reverence. Just suggesting. <laughs> That's not necessarily a fact. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to talk about um, yoga. Now, I know this is a very, very sensitive topic, especially because there are so much movements in the present age that is using yoga as a means of channeling energy, of creating harmonious states of well-being. But the issue that is sometimes spoken of about yoga in a modern context is its sense of emptiness or emptying the human soul, leaving a shell, a contorted shell. What are you in? emptying the human self off and what are you allowing to come in? You have many pundits who say Christ is a yogi. I would rather say that the yogi is the Christ, right? The essence of it is that is yogi yoga? Is yoga the yogi? The yogi is the enlightened being. That practice like rituals is the essence of who the yogi is. So for those who are in ritualistic practice called yoga, I have many warnings, many stirrings, many feelings. Number one, a lot of the contorted positions of yoga look very much like the contorted positions of ones being possessed by demonic entities. That is something one should con consider when one begins to think about what is the emptiness in yoga all about? What are you emptying yourself of? What are you allowing into the emptiness of yourself? Again, I say, a lot of the yoga positions, I'm not just talking about animist yoga, that is basic and is very um, almost primitive. I'm talking about these highly developed postures and positions. You now there's naked yoga. I'm not saying one shouldn't be proud of oneself. I'm just saying that there's a slight movement in this current age, you know, this new age ensembling of this kind of contorted body forms, and it's said to create union. Now, if we're talking about union, union of what, with whom, and how do we get to this union? Now, Christ as the yogi, let's go back to that principle. The seven deadly sins are said to be the seven virtues are rising the energy up the seven chakras to your crown chakras allowing for a highly spirited anointed and enlightened being now when the yogi has done this the yogi becomes the anointed yoga practice like christian ritualistic practice is supposed to help you to grow into your spiritual awakening so movement of yoga should be towards becoming the yogi and the yogi is very much concerned with the soul aspect of resonance on this plane, not so concerned with wellness, that is a physicalized sense and vibratory way of living. It's almost what I would call the psychedelics induced by physical and astral psychotropics that is giving you these nuanced feelings of somewhat euphoric energy. Right? This burst, this gamma ray burst of sonic and all these subtle vibrations that when they leave you, they leave you empty, hollowed out and dry. Just likened unto these trips that people are going, these controlled trips that people are going on now. It's the same. It's like going off into parallelograms in your psyche. You understand me? That when you return to the centralized space of yourself, you are more exposed, wounded, and open. 
So the seven virtues rising the energy up the chakra, the chakrams, is about stabilizing one your sexual, reproductive, biological, hormonal, vocal, offultory, third eye pupitary, and crown chakra alignments. It's about rising your frequency up the portals of the human tree to move your energy from its lowest point in orbit the physicalized sexualized root chakra energy to the spiritualized crown chakra energy where the serpentine eight is created and the energy repositions and recycles itself back through your sexual nature back into your soul if that is the purpose of your yoga practice to go on to the way of the yogi to relinquish subjectives and emotional and physicalized attachment to this world and the trappings of this world I say right on but the Christ has been our portal who have been through the tree of life has risen his energy from his root chakra to his crown chakra and has arisen the planet oh, sac oh sacred I am thou art arisen all of us so if yoga is allowing the anointing into your presence allowing the energy to rise up your chakram that the anointing of the beneficent can come upon you then I'm for it so my only support of yoga if it can be found harmonious with your Christian principle or your Rastafari principle or your Muslim principle or your Jewish principle if it finds harmony without distorting or creating parallelograms of behaviors and beliefs if it's not a religion unto its own self then I'm far into it careful of yoga contortions body contortion for sexual pseudo sexual emotional highs not just for those emotional rising in energy because I can tell you another thing that yoga is causing especially in our circles arising the stealing of energy because yoga has taught a lot of these beings to develop their energy frequency to the point where they have become conduits for the harvesting of energy from other life forms so it's becoming this cannibalistic feast of feeding upon people's energy for again the sexual and emotional pseudo pleasures right so again as I say about the yogic if it's towards being the yogi being the anointed if it's towards being the anointing then I say go absolutely for it then I say continuously grow absolutely for it I say brilliantly and beautifully, go for the anointed, go for the higher self, go for the higher sourcing, cycle the energy within your being, make the energy cyclical, so your universal or your cosmic rather can be totally aligned. And as I say, through the heart chakra, you can feel the other chakras, you can feel the physical, the mental, the astral, and the emotional environment. These are the way of the anointed. These are the ways of the anointing. These are the true ways of the yogi. So towards awakening, don't be like the wayward sun seers, sun seeking yogics, right? Who open their eyes and their pupitary unto the sun until they go blind. There's a lot of carnage, whether they, they say, you know, satya, um, satya yoga, and they have so much different terminologies, and each one has a high vibratory offering to give you, to convince you. Just like sutras, just like mantras, just like all the, the pedagogies in, in, in modern society, in, in, in academia, and just like also the dogmas and the doctrines in Christendom. So it's not about that I'm professing one form of yoga versus the other. You must be awakened, you must be aligned. The anointing must be the way, the truth, and the light of your being. 
always strive to be in sync. The anointed Christ is the yogi. He has already crossed, he has already crossed the many streams of our collective lifetime. When the energy has risen to its crown chakra, we're all aligned. Path, truth, light, and the way. This has been Jerome Sage Butler, The Tree of Life. Just stirrings, offerings on yoga and the yogic principle. I know many might not agree, many will disagree. And I won't say disrespectful things, that's easy to say. What I would say, it's up to you anyway to make your decisions. Eh? But please remember, beyond all things, I represent no special interest groups. I'm a part of no secret, no organized religious movement. No any spiritually organized movement for reclamation of no sacred order. I am just Jerome Sage Butler, at the tree of life, living man, living being in the living cosmos, reminding you that you're a gift to yourself and a gift to everyone else. Be the gift that you are.